Shetima. Mr. Speaker, our honourable colleagues, I'm Lawan Shetima Ali, representing the good people of Bursari, Gaidami, the Sargeral Constituency, and from Yobe State. Mr. Speaker, first and foremost, we should know, as been said by my colleagues, that education is a right, not a privilege. The over 13 out of school children, it was not by choice, I've been said by my colleagues earlier. But Mr. Speaker, sir, without peer of contradiction, though you have won, as been said by Ja, that we should not point any finger or blaming finger on anybody. But Mr. Speaker, first, what is needed to be known has the government provided to conduce people and implemental atmosphere for our public school to be attractive to children outside the school, sir? This is number one question that we should know. Budgetary provision. Have we given the enough budgetary provision and been expected by the UNICEF almost expecting us to provide over 26 point something percent instead of what we have provided this year we have 6.7 percent or so mr speaker honorable colleagues you will agree with me wherever you go visit your constituencies you will see public schools are being neglected despite the fact that we have been providing structures but you will see people sitting on the floor, peer floor, taking lectures under the tree, comparing to the private schools whereby you can never see any class of room having children sitting on the floor if it is a private school. What have gone wrong? We have to find out, going back to the drawing board, to at least look for better solution than saying we will not talk on the causes. We have to talk on the root causes first. I could remember when we were in the secondary school, school, a public school system started going in jeopardy in the 80s, around 84, 85. When we were in the secondary school, we were asked to start bringing our bowl to get food from the kitchen. This is why it has started swelling. No uniform. The uniform being given freely, detergents and everything stopped at that time. I don't think they have resumed back up to this moment we are talking. So Mr. Speaker, we have to go back to the drawing board to see that the causes, root causes are being addressed first. We have to address what are the causes that made our public schools to be in jeopardy. They have been neglected. Teachers should be paid as and when due, and their remuneration should be increased so that the teaching profession will become attracted to uh, uh, teachers. Accommodation for teachers is also important. We are always providing block of classrooms and offices, but no accommodation for any teacher teaching in the village. And lastly, Mr. Speaker, I will urge this house for us to take up in a bid, primary business lies with the local government level. Federal government has to hands off anything to do with primary. Let federal government take up the issue of tertiary institutions, state government to take care of secondary schools, and then primary should be taken care of by the local governments. If we are not you know, we are not going to provide equity and justice in the three tiers of government. There will be problem. So we have to provide that atmosphere. Federal government to take care of tertiary institutions, state government to take care of secondary schools, while local government, these 774 local government will be, should be given the responsibility of taking care of the primary schools. Thank you, Honorable Shatima. Thank, thank you. Honorable uh, Walioke. Impression that has been given here by various contributors, particularly my leaders and colleagues from the northwest, northeast. 
I don't want us to present the Northern Nigeria as a problem to this nation, as a liability to this nation. Honorable Wale, okay. Throughout the beginning, from the beginning to this point of the debate, and even during my address, and every contributor made it abundantly clear that it was a national problem, not a sectional problem. The House leader spoke to that, and so did every other speaker. Uh, it was a problem of the North, the South, the East, and the West. Uh, and I don't think anybody here has uh, made it uh, sectional, but go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for the guidance. I just want to add a bit further that the problem of children out of school, it's a national problem. That even in my uh, constituency, we have children that are out of school. And I haven't said that, Mr. Speaker, I want us to situate the problems. Where are, where are these problems coming from? Uh, because the Constitution, we have the various acts of parliament that we do not have any problem about, about, about legal framework to address the issue of education. The Constitution is very clear, Section 18. The, the, we have the uh, UB Act, it's very clear. And Mr. Speaker, wow. our leaders in the past, Sadauna, Tafa, Balewa, Tumafina, Ulawo, even late President Shagari, had the program UPE. Mr. Speaker, I never went to secondary school. From age 11, I was trained as a professional teacher. I have my teacher's grade 2 certificate. I have a national certificate in education. It was because of my desire to pursue career in accountancy, finance, and law that took me out of that sector. Mr. Speaker, the problem of the major problems confronting us, aside infrastructure, is personnel. We don't have the personnel. All the teachers' colleges, Mr. Speaker, in the Northwest, where I grew up, They've all been cancelled. We've all been cancelled. So you don't have secondary school graduates or people who left secondary school and went to polytechnic and you're not asking them to go and teach. They don't, they are not teachers, they don't even know the where with that to teach the children. That is one. Mr. Speaker, but the children, what takes them out of the school? Why are they not in the school? Culture. Culture. And I'm happy that some of our leaders here have spoken, they have educated us about the meaning of Alma and Marjorie. That is not actually beggars. That is not actually beggars. And I also want us to not to look at Alma Jury's school system as a failure. No. No, sir. Some of these people that you see that the Marjorie went to Alma Jury's school are even smarter than you and I. They are even more knowledgeable than you and I. But, sir, the major problem that we need to tackle with due respect to my colleagues, is corruption. It is corruption. Mr. Speaker, we had the year in, year out, we vote money for education, both at the local government, state, and even at the national level. But Mr. Speaker, implementation, do we have value for money? Do we have value? Yesterday, I approached my leader, the chairman of basic education, about the need to conduct performance and value for money audits. Not even knowing that this topic, I mean, this topic will come up. That we need to, because when you look at the quantum of money voted for this sector, and we have this problem still, you know, existing. The population of children out of school, sir, will overrun what they were. It will overrun Togo. In some European countries, they don't have the population of our children that are out of school. And we don't attend to it now. Boko Haram will be a child's play. So, Mr. Speaker, we need to look at utilization of the funds that we appropriate for this sector. Implementation. We have done so much. We have thrown out laws and acts of this parliament to address education from this country. But when it comes to implementation, the World Bank has, report has shown that out of every one era spent in this country, 40, 60 copper goes into wrong, into, into wrong hands. And Mr. Speaker, that is the area I want us to look at it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. For those who do not know, Honorable Oli okay, talks.